Hey, Singrius from 10 Levels here. Welcome to Sit Down with Singrius, episode 3. Well, uh, I don't know if you already listened to the first two podcasts, but if you didn't, go check that out. This is a podcast where I talk about the past week's releases and what I'm looking forward to this week. I try to cover achievements because that's what I'm uh, best at, what I'm most interested about. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, last week, I haven't had the chance to play many of the games. The games I did play, I already have a guide up or a guide will be coming up very soon. And I'll mention them as I go through the titles. First, before I go over, uh, go ahead, I uh, uploaded a new series called um, how long to beat joining game pass if you are a fan of our channel you probably already know i already do leaving game pass stuff but a lot of times the when the games are joining it's day one release so i didn't know the information but i figure if i know the information let's put it out there and uh, if you're interested about some games and you want to know the information uh, hopefully Mm, that will be help. That will be helpful. So the game pass that games that joined uh, the service last week was Return to Grace, Tales of Arise. This actually added the Windows stack as well. Uh, so now it has an Xbox One and Xbox Series stack, but the Xbox One version is not on Game Pass. Only the Xbox Series version is. Bluey the video game. This is a two to three hour completion, and I have a video guide on our channel. Dead Island 2 kind of surprise drop because it wasn't included in the original announcement about the games that are coming in the second half of February. So with that, let's go on to the looking at the last week's releases. Alatro is a poker roguelike game. Looks very interesting as I enjoy poker, so I want to try this. But the completion seems quite tough and lengthy. Chomp 2 or QMP2, I'm not sure how to pronounce this game's name. You control a pong ball through the level. You tap to change direction and hold to dash. Uh, look, seems to be a very simple control and fun game. It looks to be about 3 hours to complete. Return to Grace is a first-person walking simulator game in which you play as a space archaeologist. Graphics feel very Bioshock, which is a game I really enjoyed. I look forward to trying it, and it's a Game Pass Day 1 release. About 5 to 6 hours to complete this game. Tales of Arise Windows Stack launched as the game released onto Game Pass, so now it has a Xbox One, Xbox Series, and Windows Stack. This is the latest in the Tales series of JRPG games. Takes around 80 hours to complete. Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate Demon Hunters is a turn-based strategy game in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. So far, no one has the completion. It seems like a lengthy one, and it... Uh, it also has a Windows stack if you're interested in that. Froggy, a retro platformer, is a simple platformer game. Just need to get through the game for the completion and each level is quite short. It launched at 2000 Gamers Corp with the title update 1 already included. It takes about 30 minutes to complete and there is a guide on our channel. A time travels guide to past delicacies. It's a pretty weird adventure puzzle game. It has a triple stack with Xbox One, Xbox Series, and Windows. Uh, if you buy the Xbox One version first, the, you get 50% discount on the other two versions. It takes about 20 minutes to complete, and we have a guide on our channel. Geometric Sniper Z is more geometric sniping from Celestia. You snipe the targets to beat each level. I really enjoyed the first two games and look forward to trying this one. Unfortunately, few of the achievements seem a little bugged at this time. Tenderfoot Tactics is a tactical RPG with the modern take. I don't know too much about this game and I'm not really a fan of the tactical RPG genre. So far, one person has completed it and it took about 14 hours. Shape Neon Chaos is a Geometry Wars-like game, but much simpler and much easier completion. It can be completed in as little as 5 minutes. There's a guide on our channel. Shaolin vs. Wu-Tang 2 is a sequel that we, didn't, we thought we didn't need. It's cheesy, but quite fun fighting game with Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, etc. lookalike from famous movies. 
uh, I'm told this is very similar to the first game as well, but uh, a little bit shorter completion than that. It takes around 5 hours to complete and a guide is coming soon to our channel. Slave Zero X is a prequel to the 1999 game Slave Zero. It keeps the 90s feel and looks quite fun action game. So far, no one has the completion. Tennis Big Breakaway is a 3D platformer game made by Evening Star, which is made up of team that develops Sonic Mania. So the game draws a lot of comparison with Sonic Mania due to this reason. I really enjoy the Sonic and Mario platforming games, so I'm looking forward to trying this one. The completion seems to be around 15 hours. Rounds is a party game where you deal with other players. It looks like 950 gamer score is possible in about 1 hour, but no one has one achievement which is for firing a bullet at 350% speed. I'm not sure if it is glitched or no one has figured out how to do this. Geometry Survivor is Geometry Wars meets Vampire Survivor. In this game, you, it, the game plays very similar to Geometry Wars, but you can shoot. Uh, like Vampire Survivors, you just move around and the weapon just fires by itself. I really love this. Uh, unfortunately, the, comp the achievements are not varied. You just need to survive 20 minutes. So the completion can potentially be about 20 minutes. But I think realistically looking, we're looking at like 3 to 4 hours. There is a guide on our channel if you need some help. Garden Life, a cozy simulator, is a relaxed approach to gardening. Plant and nurture your dream garden. I'm not a simulation guy, so I probably will be skipping this game, but I think many people are enjoying this one so far. One person on TA has 26 hour played with all but one achievement left. Quadroids is a game where you control four screens simultaneously and it's a puzzle platformer game. Looks very interesting, but uh, controlling four screens sounds very complicated to me. Uh, one person on TA completed it with 17 hours. 502's Arcade is a collection of fast-paced arcade games. I love this kind of games having grown up playing games in the arcades. It doesn't look like an easy or quick completion, but I definitely plan on uh, checking this one out. The first, uh, the person on top of TA leaderboard currently has uh, 15 hours played and a 500 gamer score uh, so far. King Arthur Knight's Tale is a role-playing game where you play as the Black Knight who killed King Arthur. I think this is an interesting take on the King Arthur story and I hope to check it out soon. This looks to be a very lengthy completion as the person on top of TA leaderboard already has more than 100 hours played but he has not completed the game. Rough Gainer is a game based on a best-selling fantasy novel. This is a deck building adventure game. I don't know anything about the novel and I'm not really a big fan of deck building card game uh, genre of games so I'm not sure if I'm gonna try this one out. It looks like a challenging completion as well. Kraken Odyssey is a 3D action racing game. The game looks cute and the premise seems simple enough. The completion doesn't seem as simple as the top person on TA only has 400 gamer score at 12 hours. The Lost Legends of Redwall, The Scout Anthology is a collection of three action adventure games. I don't know too much about Redwall, but the game looks very nice. Completion doesn't seem so nice with top player having 175 gamer score in 9 hours. Inclinati is an ink based strategy game that was in game preview but released as full version this week. The game is available on Game Pass. The, along with full version, it came with achievements as well. I really like the aesthetic, aesthetic of this game and will likely give it a go now that it has achievements. The completion doesn't seem so bad, but I don't have too much information about it right now. Promenade is a platformer game with very cute cartoony graphics. I really love this graphic style. The completion seems to be asking for a lot as it has a ton of speedrunning and collection achievements. So far, no one has completed the game on TA. Flooded is a game that is kind of uh, has a kind of unique idea. 
the island is being flooded and you have to collect enough resources to flee in time. Uh, it's an interesting idea, but uh, probably I'll get too frustrated and give up because of the flooding and kind of the time limit kind of stuff. The completion doesn't look very easy on this one. Airy Stone Age is the latest airy game. As usual, per airy games, you fly around and collecting stuff to finish each level, and it should take around 1 to 2 hours to complete. Unfortunately, the game seems to be crashing a lot starting at level 4 for many players, so uh, the completion is not possible or very difficult due to this reason. Demons of Asperg is a 16-bit style action platform game. It feels like a game made for Super Nintendo or Genesis. I grew up playing these console uh, platform and these style of games, so definitely going to try this one very soon. The top person on TA has 200 gamers, 290 gamer score with 3.5 hours played. Fossil Fuel 2 is a survivor horror game with dinosaur. On paper, it sounds like a first-person perspective dino crisis, so I'm interested about it. But the game seems quite dark, so I'm not sure about it as my eyes have trouble adjusting and seeing things when it's too black. As far as completion, the top person on TA has 590 gamer score with 13 hours played. Unlife is this week's rather like a game. Dystopian 2D platformer set in post-apocalyptic world. The game seems like a straightforward action platformer with two endings and the completion should also be pretty easy and straightforward. It's, I think it'll take around 3 hours but the achievement for getting both endings seems to be glitched. Brute Star is a classic arcade shmup with heavy roguelike elements. I love shmups so I'll definitely give this one a go soon. But unfortunately, the computation seems pretty difficult and some might be RNG luck based. The top person currently has 435 gamer score with 7 hours played. That is all for the full releases. Let's talk about DLC and updates that released in the past week. So, Smite got its final DLC with achievements. Goddess of the Sky. It added two achievements for 23 gamer score, and now the game has 5,000 gamer score. Retromania Wrestling got a title update with 10 achievements and 285 gamer score. Unicrom, a one bit unicorn adventure, got an update called Speedrunner. It added five achievements with uh, to with thousand gamer score, and it now has five thousand gamer score. So that is the final update for this game. Tales of Arise, the Windows version, got Beyond the Dawn DLC. It adds eleven achievements for two hundred five gamer score. Reactor X two got a title update for 5 achievements, 1000 gamer score. This game has a windows deck which was also updated same. Froggy, a retro platformer. It launched with <clears throat> 1000 gamer score added, added to the as an update with the 5 more achievements. King Arthur, Knight's Tale has 2 DLCs, each with 100 gamer score, 1 achievement. Painted Devils and Rogues and Renegades. It looks like they are paid DLC that is not yet available to purchase. IO. Okay, this game released seven years ago and the developers have kind of abandoned it at this point. But a community member, Vudix and team, managed to use the cloud service configuration to update the achievement description and the requirement to unlock this achievement so the 1000 gamer score became possible on the xbox version also they went above and beyond and added three more achievements with 500 gamer score as a community update so that's all for the dlc stuff now let's look at the upcoming stuff this week. Star Wars Dark Forces Remaster is probably the biggest release this week. I remember playing some of these games back on the PC way back when and I look forward to going back and playing this some more. 
Brothers: The Tale of Two Sons remake is a game I, a remake of the game I really enjoyed on the Xbox 360. So I look forward to going back to this uh, Tale of the Two Brothers. And the, finally, One More Dungeon 2. This is a rather like a release that uh, One More Dungeon 1 was a really difficult completion at that point for me. But I ended up completing it and I ended up really enjoying the game. So I look forward to the second game as well. I expect this one to be also a, a quite tough completion. But I like the challenge. So let's bring it on. Okay, so that's it for the this week's episode of the Sangria Sit Down with Sangrias. And I'll be back with another episode next week. In the meantime, subscribe, like, and comment, and give me some feedback. I really enjoy uh, listening to your comments. So thank you, and uh, I'll see you next week.